we're going to be making my I have pea soap, which is papaya leaf, carrot, honey, and turmeric. It's really my turmeric soap. So there's a lot that's involved in the whole entire batch, but not really. It's just all kind of blended together, but in steps. Um, it's no color. It has its own color. It develops its own color, which is like an orange yellowy color. And that's not even orange. It, it, well, it starts off that way because of the honey and the carrot content. But for the most part, it turns into this, this kind of yellowish brown color. But right now I'm gonna line my mold. I, I decided to use a 25 pound mold. It's a 35, excuse me, 34 pound batch. I would normally use the molds that I made, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> so all the overage will be pouring into my silicone molds which is fine as well. So probably about clays and leaf powder. I have my my um, vitamin C here, the honey that I use, and my sodium lactate, which I really don't need, but I use anyway, and then my carrot. And it's organic baby food carrot, which all it is is carrot. So I have two sugar contents here that will kind of start getting the trace moving pretty quickly but since we're not coloring we're not doing none of that stuff it's ooh, it's not going to be a problem i have done this a lot of times so let's pray also i'm using my aloe leaf juice that i made my aloe leaf water putting my goggles on guys but i'm using my aloe leaf water and um, we'll see how that works as well. So let's get started. I have my immersion blender, my baby. We have everything here. I like to do a one over just to make sure I have everything that I need right here. And I do. All right, so this specific one, I do all, well, pretty much all my milks and clays goes in first to get the oils cool down some more and then um, we blend that in first I do that with all pretty much all my soaps if I'm not mistaken and there's also carrot powder in here as well so it's a lot of sugar which helps to accelerate the trace make sure she's on low all right it's gonna be a little loud I'm gonna mix this in first Make it a little bit easier for myself. Let's go. sells out so 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 quickly I'm hoping that when my supplies come well I have to make another batch that's why I, I'm kind of irritated that I'm not using the larger batch because the large well I'll still have the same amount of bars um, but the larger mold because I get like a hundred and something bars easily out of that plus whatever else is left over for another mold so <laughs> So we're all mixed in. So you can see how nice and thick this is already, guys. All right, let's get this. I have never used this before, and I am praying that all is good with it. Let me check my temperatures first before I do that. What am I thinking? So we're at 124.10, 124.10. 
for our oils. Where's my spoon? And for our live mixture, we are at 120. Awesome. What I like to do, guys, is um, I don't use the heat heat uh, what is it heat transfer method I don't use any of that but what I do is put the oils on first on a medium heat I'm sorry I mix my live water first on a medium heat then I put my oils on like I'm, I'm measuring everything at the same time but then I get my my live water done first all right there we go <laughs> over you can see the orange coming through it's super super orange but it doesn't stay that way because it turns like into a pretty, pretty brown taupe kind of dark taupe juice you got to get into the habit of cleaning out everything that you measured is for your recipe I try to tell people that all the time I see so many people just pour and stop because they're filming like you got to clean those containers <laughs> whatever you pour is a part of your recipe so you got to be real careful because the smallest um, the smallest amount that is less than can mess up your entire batch, depending on if you're super fat or not. So it's a pretty orange color. Check my temperature before I put the carrot in there. It's at 123. So we're gonna keep going a little bit. No, actually, I'm gonna put my vitamin C. sodium lactate because we got to start moving it's getting thick and then my honey So this is when it starts to move pretty darn quick because of the honey content already because of the carrot that I put in as powder and then the sodium lactate pretty much all of it but it's so beautiful stick blend but you can see it's nice and thick it is nice and thick it actually smells good too it has a really not earthy smell but it has this sweet smell to it kind of a sweet warm I don't know cute smell to it I always get 
fold everything down from the sides. Make sure everything is properly blended. I'm gonna have to pour soon. Just a little bit more stick blending. to get everything as tidy as possible as I'm going because honey clean up for soap making is a nightmare I want to hire this thing is hot I want to hire somebody just to do that <laughs> no shade all right a little bit more it's pretty nice and thick now obviously at trace full trace but we want to keep stirring because when you're dealing with honey and anything sweet, it can give you false trace. So you want to keep mixing, not necessarily stick blending, but you want to mix and stir. It's all in there good. But this soap, like I was saying earlier, guys, it sells really quickly because it's also in a bundle. Um, it's my turmeric bundle. It has the clay mask, my ginger turmeric and honey clay mask. It has um, the face wash. It has the soap, the soap bar, to, the happy, I'm sorry, the peace soap bar. It has the turmeric tea toner. And they love it. So I was so happy without supplies being delivered, I was able to make this. Cause I was actually just prepping for, you know, my prep batching or batch prep prepping. And I was like, wait a minute, I have enough ingredients to make it. I don't have to wait. And this one should have been restocked a long time ago, but money was tight. I couldn't restock because I had to pay for my space. Had to get that done. I'm trying to get out of here tonight with my son. Take him downtown to get, you know, take pictures near the Christmas stuff because he loves Christmas type stuff. So I want to take him downtown to do all of that. And just to get out of the house. We've been cooped up in the house for since he got out of school. Which he doesn't mind it, but I do. All right, so let's pour. So the benefits of this soap is like amazing, like amazing. I would have to really um, <laughs> write a book on it. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, you can smell the carrot. Oh, it smells good. It smells like food. All right, so let's pour, guys. Now remember, when you're pouring, you gotta be super, super careful and go slow. Don't try to go fast when you're pouring. You'll be very upset. Oh, oh my God. Here we go. This is nice and thick. Next part, I'm going to stir it up. Oh, I just get one mold out of this, so I'm probably a little bit for a smaller one. It's so pretty. I wish it can stay this orange color. It's 
so annoying that it doesn't. All right, so let's shimmy this. Uh oh, my finger got stuck. Those bubbles come up and I smooth out the tops. And guys, when I say this girl starts to set up because and it heats back up. Let's see what the temperature is now. Right now the temperature is, is at 123 <laughs> still. So let me pour it into the other bowl before it gets too hard. And it becomes unpourable. And then I will have to do those tops like right now. I'm gonna to have to get my guy um, to make a smaller mold, kind of half the size of my large molds. You guys see that? Okay. Because sometimes I just wanna make a small batch of something, but not too small. Um, this is like the perfect recipe, I swear. And no, I cannot share my recipe. So before you ask, this was blood, sweat, and tears of me trying to perfect this. So y'all, I'm sorry, but I would never share my recipes. Go out and make your recipes, perfect it for you and your liking. Never copy someone else's recipe. Trust me, you'll be mad you did. Having a soap business is all about being unique. That's what people come to you for because you're different. The same person that purchased a carrot soap from you would not probably more than likely feel comfortable purchasing a carrot soap from someone else. That's how the game goes. So it's very important that you are as unique as possible. Very original. I don't know what made me start making this soap. I think I started making it in 2000. No, I think when I first started, I think it maybe in 2013, but I made it different. Um, well, it was kind of the same actually but I scented it. It was a scented soap. It had cherry, it was called cherry almond or something like that. Had no almond in it. <laughs> but, and I would put the oatmeal on top. Man, it was something else. It was pretty though, and it smelled really, it sold, it sold really well. I don't know why I stopped doing that one. I really don't, really don't know. So let me hurry my butt up and get this into this mold, which I am trying to do There's so much. Cause I gotta do the tops over here before they start to set up too much. So see that all empty. That's what you wanna do guys. Sorry guys, I gotta fan this down. And shimmy it. Hopefully I don't drop you over there. And I put that one to the side, pick up this that I spilled a little, put that to the side and then I get ready. Oh man, got soap all over my spoon to do my tops. All right guys, here we go. This one, I don't wait for the tops because <laughs> Coming back in five minutes, it's just not gonna work the same. Trust me on that. It's gonna be nice and hard and it's gonna go into its own gel phase. I do not force gel on any of my soaps. Um, I don't force gel at all because they all heat up on their own and they come out the same every time. So I don't want to force anything. I let nature take its course with my soaps. Whatever is naturally supposed to happen with this soap is what I want to happen. Let me go this way so you can see a little bit better. Looks like a 
cake. So what I try to do is I try to get the tops done as fast as possible so when the gel phase start, it's done. I'm like, I'm not, cause it's gonna start as I'm doing this, trust me. It does every time, like I feel the heat. This is one of the soaps that I make that heats up a lot. It heats right the heck back up. I think it goes back up to like 140 or something like that. And it starts to get dark and then it goes opaque. By tomorrow, it'll be opaque. But I don't cut this one until maybe two days because the bottom is still nice and warm and well hot. And then um, it actually is not ready to be unmolded. So I try to wait two to three days before I even touch this one. I'm just glad I was able to make it because my customers are like dying. I had to give one of my customers the samples, <laughs> a whole bunch of samples. She was like, oh my God, I hope I can make it <laughs> without this soap. I'm like, really, is it that, is it that serious? They love this soap. It, I mean, it does a, an amazing job at clearing acne, helping with dark uh, spots. Okie dokie. And I gotta hurry up and do this other one. I try to go on the in the middle. Get anything that wasn't touched. I know it looks ugly from your side, but it's actually pretty on my side. <laughs> the, when the waves are going this way, and I'll show you guys, when the waves are going, you know, outward, it's just, like, on this side, it just looks way better. A lot, lot better. And I try my hardest to make them as even as possible in terms of height, all the, all the way across the mold. You know, it's so funny. This is the only way that I felt comfortable doing my tops. I would try so many different tops and oh gosh, it was like miserable, a miserable fail every time. My battery is low. Okay, guys. Okay. I have peace is done. Can't wait to. So you can see it's a little bit different coming this way. If I don't mess with it, it's done. So we're going to move it over, get all this crap down. Stuff that needs to be washed. to finish prepping my batches um, later today. So I'm going to make this as even because this will be bars as well. Nothing gets a free. I should get about eight bars out of here or maybe more I think. I think about eight. And they're all full bars so I have to treat this mold the exact same. Uh-oh, this way. Okay. Then once I press it together, um, it will come together and be ta actually taller, but we have to get it into this little thingy that I made for it, if I can find it. I couldn't find it the other day for my aloe soap. All right, guys, so that is it. That is how I make 
my I Have Peace soap, which is sweet orange carrot, not sweet orange, sweet uh, carrot, organic carrot, papaya leaf, um, turmeric. Good morning, everyone. So, um, I'm noticing that this soap, I forgot how fast this soap sets up. So, I'm gonna go ahead and unmold it and check the bottom. And I checked the bottom because of um, the gelling, it can still cause it to be soft on the bottom. But we're also, I think we're probably completely hard because we're in the winter months, the fall winter months. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't, it shouldn't still be uh, soft, I guess. In the summer months with the extra heat, this will probably not be set up. It'll still be going through gel phase. So in order to, I should have done, did this without gloves. But in order to um, get it out of the molds, all you do is just take your tape. Normally when I tape my molds, I would do a little cuff and then tape the rest down so that it'd be easy to lift up. But this is just regular office tape. It's not the shipping tape that I normally would use. So we're okay. It'll come right up. So the next thing, just unscrew it here, pull these out. I always try to make sure I put the nuts and bolts back on there because sometimes I'll knock them over by mistake and then they're gone. <laughs> they're somewhere that I don't feel like looking. They're under cabinets and shelves and all of that. So I just try to keep up with my things as much as possible, guys, because listen, when you pay your funds for stuff, can't take it lightly. All right, put my gloves back on. And then remember we have this one as well in the little mold. So what I like to do is take one side off, hold my hand underneath and slide it to the edge of the counter. Oh, sorry guys and then just remove it that way. It's just so much easier to me. And then I just slide it off. It's, it's rock hard. Still a little tiny, like a, like a smidgen of warmth I can feel underneath. All right. So let me give you an example of why it's important to make sure you're smooth out as much as possible. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see this indentation right here? That's where it was kind of, like if I would have banded it down, I probably wouldn't have gotten that. But it's the end piece of the cut off anyway. But I just want to show you guys the importance of making sure that, um, your, your lining is very smooth <laughs> and you fill out and you bam it down or shimmy it to make sure it fills all those pockets. Because once the soap starts to set up, here's another one right here. Once the soap starts to set up, it's kind of impossible to do that. All right, so here we go. And this is all I'll do for the next day. Maybe I'll come back later today because it's so cool in here. Um, I don't think that it'll be, it'll, it'll, you know, stay warm for too long. It's literally just warm on the bottom. If I want to, I can cut it right now. But what I like to do is I like to let everything air out. 
So I just move that one over here to the side. And then I take this one out and I just sit it. Like I will unmold the silicone mold um, ones. And anytime I'm actually going to, like if I'm making a soap to sell and I use these molds for the, the extra, the, like the overage pours, I would cut them down in three and then I'll make my bars out of that. So when it comes to these, I just let some air get in there. And depending on how soft the soap is, guys, I don't take it out right away. But if I can get air without messing up the sides here, I'll kind of pop it out because I know it's ready. Like this is completely ready. These are one of the soaps that gel really well on their own. And I don't have to do much. All right. So with this one, we're just going to sit it down. It's completely ready to be cut, but I'm not going to cut it yet. I want some more oxygen to harden it up a little bit. Like it's super hard. And then we go from there. It gels on its own. It gels really, really, really good throughout the entire soap for the most part on its own. It's one smooth color. Um, I love this soap, guys, and my customers love it. They absolutely love it. So we'll come back later to cut. Probably, well, I'm not promising, um, although this is going to be one whole video. But we will come back later to do the cutting together. So I'll be back. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and cut the big loaf because I cut the smaller loaf or the big slab. I think we're going to cut it, y'all. I'm not sure. <laughs> So let's test it out. It is still, like when I say a smidgen warm on the bottom, a smidgen. Like I can just feel the, the change in temperature. So here we go. Let's see. Yeah, it's nice and, and hard. And it kept a really pretty orangey color, which I love. And I think that has a lot to do with the um, aloe vera, the aloe leaf juice, the aloe leaf juice that I used for the liquid. Instead of the aloe vera juice that I would buy from the store, I made my own aloe leaf. And it's prettier for some reason. <laughs> it looks prettier. Okay, let's do another loaf. And I think I'm just gonna cut these and then let them sit and air out instead of cutting them directly into bars i think i'm going to wait yeah they're still kind of warm guys oh lord about to fall so heavy <laughs> third loaf so out of that first the the overpour batch or um, loaf I was able to get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve bars which is not normal because of me not paying attention to the cut <laughs> yeah these are pretty still still pretty warm so I'm going to leave them to air out and get more oxygen and cool down a little but I was able to get 12 bars and solely because it was one color but I didn't it, and it's it gelled perfectly so I was able to get out of the silicone mold without me messing anything up and that's always a plus Nice 
soon as they're on, they're not going to bother them. And that's another thing, guys, I had to learn how to develop was patience. Patience. My goodness. It was tough. It was tough. Having patience, especially if you have multiple colors. Not even just that, but you know, when you have multiple colors in the soap, you really gotta have patience. Just let it sit for three days at least before you unmold it. That was hard for me to do, especially when I first started. And then the more you're handling it and all that stuff, trying to get it out of the mold and, oh, you can mess it all up. I have done it a million times. I've messed up in terms of the actual batter going, you know, just doing all that and, and just, oh, not understanding the, the qualities of the ingredients, the, the chemical qualities or the, you know, how they're made and um, how sugars and things like that would affect trace and, oh man. And I would try to record videos. So when I first started, <laughs> I was always trying to do making videos, but of course I had a little baby at that time. He was a little toddler and you know, it was hard. <laughs> He was always getting in the darn, you know, in the shots. And I'm just like, oh my God. So one time, OMG, I finally made it through, nearly made it through. I was literally at the end of my first real making video on my YouTube channel. And y'all, or for my YouTube channel. And guys, my son Noah... He was about three years old. He did not like to keep his bottoms on. He would take off his pull-ups and he would, you know, walk around. <laughs> so. Oh my God. And then I'm going to get out of this little piece, this end piece, guys, I'm, I, I think I can get one, no, I'm going to get one out of this one and some good samples, good size samples. So he would, this one video, he jumped in the shot and I didn't see him for the longest time because he was so small and I was up so high. And OMG, this boy was in the shot with no bottoms on. He had on his shoes. He had on some Chuck Taylor high tops. <laughs> he had his shoes on, but he didn't have the damn bottoms on. And y'all, he was standing there for a good a good five minutes before I noticed him. And when I tell you I was, this was the best video ever. And I couldn't do, I just happened to, he happened to tug on me, but he was sitting there playing with his little wee wee, <laughs> not playing with it, but just, you know, fiddling around with it. And, was, and he was in the shot. OMG. So I got two good rows of samples that I can cut. That's always important for this soap because this soap sells a lot and people always want to try it first though. Um, but y'all, he friggin', I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one since it's so thin. Um, he was standing there for five good minutes. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I happened, I think I I think I did finish the video. I can't remember. Yeah, you know what? I did finish the video. I didn't post it. I was going back to do the editing or whatever. And I saw this little joker standing there with no bottoms on. His little wee wee was just hanging. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't post this. And back then I didn't understand how to edit and, and you know, all that stuff. Oh man, it was, it was a nightmare. All right, here we go. So, um, I cleaned my cutter, now it's time to cut. And I definitely tried to clean her before, Oof. I tried to, you know, sanitize. So with this one, of course, I have extra 
pieces. My samples came out amazing, all nicely and even, nicely even. These will be a little bit thinner, but I, I'll double them in the loaves. But I have the one inch cutter. And so even when I cut these with the other cutter, they should all be about the same. <laughs> they are the same actually, but they should all be the same. I remember when I first started, it was so confusing to me. <laughs> it was like, God, like, what do I do? And you have to, and that's the thing with, you know, with when it comes to having the same consistency, the, the same quality every single time and being able to give your customers exactly what they're expecting every single time. Um, you got to do some measurements. You have to like literally think things out and, you know, just make sure like what I would always put in the forefront is the whole idea of making sure that this is the same every single time. So anything that I did, even before I said, oh, I'm gonna start making so-and-so, I said, you know what? Is this something that I can produce the same quality every single time? Can I produce the same look of it every single time? Can I produce you know, the same feel? Will I be able to get the ingredients all the time from five years from now can i get the same ingredients the same quality of ingredients um can my customers expect the same thing every single time with me taking on making this specific product so if the answer is yes go for it and also the other thing is oh shoot the other thing is um oh guys try not to but the other thing is can you get um can you afford the ingredients again you know what i mean like over and over and over can you afford it because and i asked that because whenever we make something new that's more ingredients is it going to take away from the ingredients that you're already using can you just use what you already have in terms of you know what you're using to make whatever product um, if so, can you make that product using those same ingredients? And so those are questions you want to always ask yourself before going into making something else. And, and that became very important because I, I did a video the other day about trying to save money in your business and create some sort of cash flow, which is, whoa, guys which is so difficult to do at times, especially if you're just working out of your pocket, you don't have that PPP money. <laughs> and you know, even if you did have a P the PPP money or if you are going to um, get a business loan, it is not, it always makes this sound guys about the third cut, which is so weird to me. Um, but when you don't have that money or, you know, a, a, a sort a, a a stronger source of income it becomes you know a little difficult to maintain and once that money starts running out and you're not producing what you need to produce in terms of a profit it becomes very difficult to, to re-up on your supplies consistently I'm going to be completely honest and transparent that's very difficult sometimes for me to do especially right now it has it, it was or it has been because I had to build this space out. And I was building this space out of my own money. I didn't, I did not get approved for any PP, nothing. And so I try to tell people, listen, you have to, it's good to get money and get help. Yes, but you have to be able to sustain and you have to be able to make a profit to where you can pay back those expenses on time and pay your vendors and all that stuff and still be able to afford to run the business full time or even part time it is difficult it's not it's not the easiest thing to do so you have to have a plan so when that money runs out are you still making a profit when you don't have that free money and you know, that strong source of income is it still able are you still able to produce so that's something you want to ask. And then if you have to get a loan, 
you're going to have to start paying that loan back. Are you going to be able to spare that extra money out of what you already make, if anything, <laughs> to start paying, you know, to add another, another monthly expense for the next five to 10 years? So we have to start thinking a little bit more logically, guys, and a little bit more realistically when it comes to our money sources and how we uh, profit, uh, how, we, how we set our, our business up for profit. Because, honey, I tell you guys all the time, it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do. And I'm running this business full time. This is my primary, primary bread and butter. If this business does not keep going, I would not be able to afford, um, you know, expenses in my home. Even though a lot of this money does not go to my personal, like I can't always pay myself. But having this being able to take care of itself and lend a helping hand to my four walls every now and then, it's an awesome thing. So, but all that is about to change in 2022. My main thing was getting into this space and now I'm here. And so, yeah, it's a good thing. I'm excited. I'm really excited. So these come out always as some beautiful, beautiful bars, guys absolutely adore these these are really amazing facial bars and these will be ready in 30 days which will be january 26 and i'm excited i'm super excited so those are some things that's your message for the day those are some things that you really have to think about not a lot of soap makers are talking about it um you know because they want you to think that they're they're balling out of control but if you can have this one source of income making money for you that's a great thing and it and then it's scalable if it's scalable that's a beautiful thing and if it's scalable without you having to acquire funding if it's scalable from its own like if, if this business is financing itself that's a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing. Guys, I'm going to bring this camera down a little lower so you can see. These are amazing bars, guys. And I, I think, well, not I think, I know I'm going to have to make another batch of these when my supplies get in. I know I am. So I'm going to cut this last loaf and um, that'll be it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you go to honeymilkco.com for all your soap and skincare needs. And I will be cleaning up this mess, getting them on the curing racks, which I've already started to do here. This is from the first loaf the overflow loaf and then I will be getting the rest of these on the curing racks for a week I have to set my um, set it on my task and then I'm going to finish with my prepping so when my supplies come in I will have um, the majority of the soaps done in pre prep and then I will be able to add whatever oils needed are needed because I have my batch record there and then I'll be able to, you know, see what's needed, add them in there and then start making next week. Hopefully that's the goal. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.